Hi, this is Julia Brothers, and I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew on the Keith Andrew Network, and um, it was fantastic. And anybody who wants to be on the show should contact Keith because he's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Keith Andrew Network. This is the one and only Keith Andrew Network. I am your host, Keith Andrew. Long here was a good friend of mine. Haven't seen you in three years, but it's really wonderful to see you again. Julia, a brother, so I just want to say, brother, it's great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you too, Keith. Hey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's also I, been fun to follow what you're doing on the network. Um, the last three years, even though we haven't uh, we haven't had a chance to catch up online in person, but um, um, I look at the show and look at your interviews and follow you on media, so it's been great. No, I appreciate it, and I do see the, everything you post on Instagram too. It's really wonderful. We should definitely hang out sometime. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> your last name is Brothers. So. Do you ever do like the whole call? You know, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> um, I hear no, I, no, I don't do that. But I hear a lot of um, like, uh, oh, are you any relate? Older people say like, are any relation to Dr. Joyce, as in Dr. Joyce Brothers? Um, not too many people say that anymore because she's uh, she passed away, and you know, it's usually older people that say that kind of thing, but. Um, People say very strange things like any relation to the Smothers Brothers, which doesn't really make any sense because their last name is Smothers. <laughs> and because my last name is Brothers, um, uh, robots think that I'm a man. So my junk mail is all got to do with um, in penis enlargement and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> or if people think that I'm a company, like Lehman Brothers. Or you can say you're a Mario from the Mario um, Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I said, it's, but it's, a, it's a good name. I like it. <laughs> like I said, it's freedom speech, self-expressing, and I try to keep a PG, PG-13, so I would yes. no longer use the F word, but you can say any other words you want. Uh, I'm trying to get people more interested, so I try to keep it along those two lines. Absolutely. But the first thing I want to promote is for people who want to see our very first episode we ever did was season three, episode 268. That's when we did a double interview with my other good friend, who's an actress. But with that being said, the Keith Angie Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a warning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of warden disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's approved to them it's still amount to something. So hashtag break the labels. With that being said, Half hour, three, four minutes of your time. Say anything you want. Freedom of speech, self-expressing. Keep in mind it's a PG, PG-13 format. And starting off, you mentioned in our last interview that you are an actress. But because we did a double interview, I'm going to go back to the basics and give it your own time. Give okay. you your own time. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, how is wife growing up? Um, well, it was great. I mean, life growing up was really, uh, I had a, you know, my, my parents met in the theater. They were both actors and they met doing summer stock in Long Beach Island, New Jersey in the summer of 1950. And my mother's father had been in vaudeville and he was part of a duo, a music and comedy duo. My father's parents met um, his, my, gra my grandmother, my father's mother, I uh, was an actor and she was also a teacher and she was teaching a Shakespeare class and she met her husband 
because he came in to take the class. So um, my memories of growing up was my grandmother reading me Shakespeare and, um, you know, pretending like I was Patty Duke. I did the Patty Duke show in my, uh, in my garage with the garage door be, being the, the curtain. And, um, I did Patty and Kathy. Uh, uh, and so growing up was good. We moved around a lot. My dad and mom both stopped acting. Um, and my dad was in sales for the railroad and he was so good at it because of his acting background. Um, he would be sent to one town and he'd get the sales force in order. And um, it was industrial development. They would try and get uh, firms to build on the railroad line so that the railroad could ship their freight. And then we'd move. So we moved about every six months or so. And by the time I think I was in seventh or eighth grade, I'd been in 12 schools, maybe 11, 12 schools. We moved quite a bit. I liked it though. I mean, it was, it was fun for me. Um, and we moved around quite a lot in the Northeastern area of the country, Ohio, Maryland, West Virginia, Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, New York, like that. Um, and, and, uh, went to college at Rutgers and majored in theater, English and philosophy. <laughs> I couldn't decide which of three. Um, of course, basically all three of them are relatively useless i guess practical people would say but uh um but i really loved college and then after college moved to new york and uh was in new york for a good long time um did sang in a country band did stand-up comedy did plays and then moved out to los angeles for a while and los angeles was i i liked some things about los angeles but it wasn't really my cup of tea so I moved up to San Francisco and um, worked up there in theater. Uh, I've, I've been very, very fortunate that um, I do stage performances. Um, I'm mostly uh, a theater actress. I'm, I'm back in New York now, but I'm, well, right now, actually, presently, I'm in San Francisco um, doing a fabulous project that I would like to talk about in a second. But... Um, but the theater community in San Francisco is really thriving and really incredible. And I've been very, very lucky in my life and I've worked, um, pretty consistently. Um, and after San Francisco in 2011, I came back to New York to do a show on Broadway with Elaine May, um, called Relatively Speaking. And um, we had done it in San Francisco and then in New Jersey and then in Arizona. And then it finally went to Broadway and that was really fun. It brought me back to New York and in New York I have stayed uh, and except I go out of town to do regional theater quite a bit. Um, and which is uh, why I'm in San Francisco right now um, doing this amazing rock opera by the Kilbanes called Weightless. And I play God, <laughs> and hence my God hairdo. God is sort of a gender-fluid, Bowie-esque kind of figure, and um, it's, a, it's such a great show. It's the third time that we've done it. Um, we did it at Z Space in San Francisco, and then we were at Under the Radars Festival at the Public Theater it, this January. And now we're at um, ACT at the Strand in downtown San Francisco, beautiful theater, um, to do a, a limited run. And it's uh, by the Kilbanes, which are a husband and wife team. Um, and they do musicals that are based on myths. You, I'm still listening. I just have to... Uh, do okay. Sure. And um, so the um, this particular one is based on... Um, a, 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 a thread of a story from Ovid Metamorphosis about these two sisters, uh, Procne and Philomela, who run away because the father wants to marry them off to local nitwits and, um, and what befalls them and the fates that befall them. And it's, uh, the music is fantastic. Um, the storyline is compelling and it's great people. And um, I'm having a lot of fun. 
<laughs> no, absolutely. So that's sort of, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's that. That sort of brings me up to the the present day, as far as you know, what I'm doing right now, um, and uh, and I am. I really, really, really love doing theater. Um, live performance to me is. Uh, I don't, it's really challenging and it's really rewarding uh, to be with a, a with an audience. Um, and I don't have very much experience with film. I have some experience with film and s some experience with television, uh, but nothing is better than live theater. <laughs> no, absolutely. I just want to point out, I do apologize for getting up real fast. My cat was meowing at the door. I don't know if you could hear him, but, you know. But, Anything oh, can happen oh. live, right? <laughs> Maybe the kitty needs to appear on the show. That's well, he's nineteen, so he thinks he's a senior citizen. He is a senior citizen, so he thinks when he meows, you have to drop whatever we're doing and go see him. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love cats. Cats are wonderful. I wish I could have one, but I travel too much. Because I, um, you know, I'll like work in Arizona for two and a half months and come back to New York, maybe do something in New York and then go up to Lowell, Massachusetts or out to San Francisco or whatever, you know, so it's, it's really hard to, to have a pet. Um, if when you travel that much and you're gone that often, it's not really fair to them to leave them alone. You can have a service dog. A service dog. Yeah. You can always get well, a service dog. Yeah. Except I don't really need a service though. <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the next question, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But I was wondering, do you, or what do you be interested in going half on helping me get a studio? I know you got to say no, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, I don't, I don't, to help you get a studio? You mean, oh, are you doing a fundraiser? Well, if you have like an extra room in your place, or you know a place, then maybe I can you know, work something out. Oh yeah, absolutely, sure. I mean, I, um, I, I know some people that do a lot of voiceover work, and they use studios, um, and I can certainly ask them, you know, give you their information, and you can get in touch. That's yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, we can talk more about it off the air. I didn't want to impose on you. I apologize. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. That's that's great. Now, the next, It'd be great to have your own studio. No, I would. I would love that. So I sit down with the person instead of getting up and having Skype and going doing all its BS or having someone knock at the door, have the freaking dog barking. It's you know, yeah, it makes it more entertaining. But it's kind of like I give you an example why I ask because if you want to go half on a place. Like I said, when I actually go half on a place, like, oh, if you have your own apartment. Can I give you like 500 for use of a room? That's what I asked and what I meant by. But uh, the reason I bring that up is I was doing an interview over the phone. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing a lot of phone interviews, a lot of Skype interviews. And I prefer Skype because you get to see who you're talking to. Right. But what I don't like is phone interviews because... You be on the phone, you're like, hmm, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Dead silence, waiting for him on Max and I'm requested. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do this. It, it feels like I'm talking to myself. I hate phone interviews. Oh. And there's uh, some people to be like, when they're doing phone interviews, yeah. It ain't doing better to just do stupid things like that. And I yeah, bet there's people like that or to writing things down. It's. I like, I have ADD, ADD, ADHD, so I have to be focused. Mm -hmm. For an example, there's a baseball game. Baseball, I, I get to that in a second. Uh, but the long story is so there's a baseball game later today, and they're like, oh, we want to see you because I befriended them on Instagram. I told them about my show for a bunch of high school kids. They're like, oh, yeah, we, we want you there. Okay, well, uh, when's it start? Four. Hmm? When's it end? Six. All right, I'm not really into baseball. I may show up like five, five thirty. At least, you know, I don't have to send, endure, you know, all the two hours of fun and sitting with the drunks and whatever. 
But on the reason I'm going is they're like, oh, we want you there. And you're like, oh, we can take pictures for your talk show. So I'm like, fine, might as well bring my belt with me. And uh, for people who want to see it. Yeah. You know, I, I went to it. WrestleCon. If I knew, I forgot where you were in um, the city. You know, when I went to WrestleCon, I was actually there. And I took pictures with, you know, Jim Duggan and Booker T, Chris Stratus. And I didn't want to take the picture with the bell because people always see me with it. I'm right. like, if we're in the room, here, I want I want you to hold it. I want you to pose with it, do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, if I have to go to the baseball event, yeah, might as well bring the bell and let the team pose with the belt. And then I can use that for my live stream. And right. that's the only reason I'm going, because, you know, I've been talking to them online. I tried getting most of them on the show. And um, for the most part, they're like, oh, yeah, there's a half the team wants to be on the show. Someone else said the other part of the team does not, whatever, you know, just fine. But I didn't feel like sitting there like this for two hours I'm not really a big baseball fan. I reason I go to like a Yankee game, Mets game, it's a day out. I get right. to experience it. My fear is I've been thinking about yesterday, you know, because it's a high school game, I'm probably gonna get hit in the head for freaking um, foul ball or whatever. So at least I don't know. I'm probably just reflecting, but I don't want to sit there for two hours. I'm like, huh? Right. This is interesting. Right. They run around the field, play ball. Wow. That's oh. really great. I, I don't, if I was going with you or going with somebody, I have someone to talk to or BS with. Right. But right. I don't want to sit there for two hours saying, why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I, yes, I do. I mean, I, I love baseball, so I would probably go and sit for two hours, but um, so, so it's funny. I don't like wrestling, so <laughs> I couldn't go and sit and watch wrestling for two hours. But you could. So there you see this <laughs> makes the world go round, right? It's funny you should mention it. <laughs> when I was younger, sorry, I'm just trying not to cut off my belt behind me. When I was younger, I watched wrestling religiously every Monday, every Thursday, or whatever day I was on. Now, I watch for a couple minutes. Um, you know, I watch for the women, and after they're done, I'm like, eh, I'm not interested. And since I started my talk show, I don't play video games anymore, because I used to play video games every single day. Since 2013, when I started my talk show, I lost all interest mm -hmm. in it. And oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, because I have ADD. I need to be doing something. I want to be constructive. I like being a part of it. So I like going to meet and greets. Maybe we can go and meet and greet if you're interested. You know, I like walking around, you know, introducing myself, that, you know, that human interaction. You know, I can sit watch wrestling like for an hour and or something, then I'm like, all right, I'm bored. What else is there? Yeah. Yeah. But this is not about me. This is about you. And well, no, I mean, that's, that, that's, an, it's a, uh... It's it's really great that you know that about yourself and know that um, how to how to take care of yourself and you know a lot of times people put themselves in situations that they know that they don't want to be in um, you know and then there are you know bad consequences to those choices so it's a good thing that you are so healthy about those that type of things. No, I agree. And to be honest with you, the only reason I'm going to the baseball game. It's because mm -hmm. I want to take selfies and I want to take pictures with them because I'm, I've talked to them online. Might as well put a face behind the screen so they Absolutely. don't think I'm a creep or anything. So I'm only yeah. going to introduce myself and the network. Sure. That's it. Yeah. I can care less. And you can make some friends. Yeah. And, and you know, I can care less about the right. baseball game. But um, I don't know. It's just like one of those things I need to be part of something than mm -hmm. just, you know, sit there with my thumb up my ass and waste some time. 
But it's true. <laughs> but passing the show back over to you, what was yeah. your number one breakthrough? And with that being said, social media. Can social media make you or break you of everything you accomplished throughout the years? Did social media mm -hmm. help you or did it hurt you? That's number one. And number two, what was your very first break? Um, let's see. Uh, my very first break, uh, I didn't have very many breaks. I worked really, really hard for a really long time with no breaks. Um, the whole time that I was in New York uh, was very difficult. I had to create my own work. I would go around I would make the rounds. They called it making the rounds because this was before the internet and everything. You went and, and, and dropped your picture and resume off at casting directors and agents offices and stuff like that. And that was called making the rounds. And then you would do follow up calls. And I did that, I don't know, once every six weeks or something. And uh, people, nothing ever. People would say, don't ever call here again. No, we don't look at pictures. Don't leave something. You know, you get get to somebody's door and there's a big sign that says, do not leave pictures and resumes. Actors, do not knock on this door. <laughs> it was really. Um, and, and I didn't really, you know, have like a mentor or somebody who kind of helped me. Um, so I moved to L.A. and um, started to get a lot of acting work there, oddly enough, uh, in theater even though I was in LA, which is all film and television, um, which led me to theater up in San Francisco. And I think that the, um, the thing that the role that I did that made a whole community aware of me and, uh, and introduced me to like the whole theater up in San Francisco was, um, I did, uh, Vivian Baring in a play called wit and it is about a woman who um, eventually dies of ovarian cancer. Um, but it's very funny, and it's um, long monologues um, and, uh, you know, head shaved and all of that stuff. And, and I did it in, at um, San Jose Stage, and um, it was uh, very well received and um, got like incredible notices and it's better than the national tour that came through and you know that kind of stuff and while my acting work was going well after that I was working sometimes 56 and 58 weeks a year with overlapping contracts you know um, rehearsing one thing at one theater during the day and then jumping in my car and driving across town to perform at night. And that has, that went on for a very long time, um, uh, which was really quite wonderful. And, um, and so I, you know, for the past, I don't know, um, almost 30 years, I've been working steadily, very steadily in theater. And I am one of the very lucky few that, that, that have that kind of life. Um, I think that, that, um, only four or 5% of the people in actors equity, which is the, the stage union, uh, work as much as I do. So I'm very, very fortunate in that regard. And social media, um, for me, social media is great because it is an excellent way to network with people. Um, but it's also a great way to keep up with the people that you work with. Paul oh, Williams, it is Vanessa Lina. Uh, Adrian Monroe. Uh, Adam Bible. This is Cynthia Babs today. I'm Sonia Fisher. This is Sharon Smith. My name is Alexandra Bowie. My name is Amelia Clover. Hi, I'm Amy Linden. Hi, I'm Amy Clover Brown. Tamara Green. Hi, my name is Asata Caldwell. Hi, everybody, I'm Brooke Percy. Hi, I'm Bryn Bird. Hi, I'm Casey Dunn. Hi, it's Cassandra Kavinsky. Hi, I'm Christina Breza. I'm Cindy Hogan. I'm Courtney Sinello. Hi, I'm Daisy. My name is Deborah Jane East. Hi, my name is Diana Marasea. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria London. Hi, I'm Heather Crona. Hi, 
I'm Heather Callahan Stevens. Hi, I'm Jay Nicole Ralph. Hey, it's Janie Patrell. Hey, it's Tui. My name is Julia Brinkowitz. Kathleen Wills. Kimberly Amato. Hi, my name is Laura Putton. Hi, Hi I'm Laura Shapanis. Hi, everyone. I'm Alyssa Damas. This is Michelle Mupo, a.k.a. Fuchsia. I'm the I'm Mike Palmer. Hi, my name is Sarah Joy Mount. Hi, I'm Susan Brinder. Um, hi, everyone. This is Vino Cleone. Hi, I'm Cheryl Tana. Hi, I'm Stephanie Herrera, and I was just on the Keith Andrew Network. It was tons of fun. We used up all our time and then some. I really recommend this show. And uh, try to be on a guest on Keith's show. It was super fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Keith Angie Network. We took a very special quick Kamasa break. Skype had a big fart, so now we're back. Now, with that being said, with nine, nine, <laughs> nine, 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 with the nine minutes left and counting, I'm going to pass the show over to you. You can say anything you want, talk about what? anything you want. This is your time. Gloves off, I have nothing to hide at all. You can say anything you want, talk about whatever you want. Ask me anything you want, and it's great to talk to you after three years. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, um, I guess. Um, um, I guess. Let's see. Now, now I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, uh, I would. I guess I, some of the things I'd like to talk about are um, um, what's happening in theater across the country is really interesting. Um, uh, there's a lot of changes happening. Um, there are a lot more plays that are being done that are about women, about women of color, uh, people of color, um, and uh, just a lot more different viewpoints. It for a long time we had uh, while you know the plays were really wonderful and everything, but the viewpoint was always from a white male perspective and. Um, and that's really changing now. There were, I think, 30 different artistic director jobs that were up um, in right now in theater, and um, there's a lot of change taking place, and it's and it's really exciting. It's a it's an exciting time to be working in theater, and I'm and I'm very glad that uh, glad that I, I that I am, you know. <laughs> um, and I think that. Uh, uh, you know, too, you do something for a really long time, and and it's uh, and it's it's very rewarding to be able to do what it is that you love to do. I mean, like you, getting a, being able to uh, do the talk show. You know, it's it's something that you're really good at, and you've been doing it for a long time, and um, it's something that you really enjoy. And, uh, you know, to be able to do what you love, I think is, um, I count myself as a very lucky individual. W what do you think about that? No, absolutely. And, you know, there are parts where you say, this is the best interview i ever done. There's other parts where I'm like, I really need to work on myself. But this is therapy for myself. This is uh, helping me with my social skills, being more interactive be independent it just helps me work on myself and build up on my character and bring it out more it'll be more spontaneous and funny you know all that fun um jazz you know yeah. jazz hands or whatever you want to call that yeah but um no this is what i want to do until i die you know i don't want to do it like this i mean like Maybe we can go half on a place if you have an extra room in your apartment. Like, oh, I can, if you want it, you can do 500 a month and you can do whatever the hell you want in it. Free mm -hmm. money for you. And yeah. I get something out of it. Yeah. Um, I guess I can walk around and see what's... Well, first thing I need to do is get sponsors. But mm -hmm. the biggest, my first mistake I made was I don't have a fan base. That was my oh. first thing. So what I'm focused on now and why I'm going to that baseball game I told you about is because I want to make a fan base. You can't do jack shit if you have absolutely no one supporting you. Right. And that was my mistake. I'm like, well, I have a disability, but people feel sorry for me. And yeah, I did 300 episodes, but yeah, yeah I didn't really have a following. Now... 
I took everything down. Yes, we're there up to 586, but in my free time, I'm on Instagram. I find people who I like or good looking or interested. I say, hey, yeah. my name is Keith Andrew. Very nice to meet you. This is what I'm doing. I would love to have you as a fan. Right. I should have been doing that from the start. That was my mistake. So now right. I'm working backwards saying, yeah. okay, here are my interviews. But I'm also introducing myself, you know, in my free time or, you know, my job gets crazy because I kind of, I like befriending people. So I'm a cashier and I'm not going to say where. But um, they get crazy because I talk too much, number one. I have diarrhea <laughs> on the mouth. And I like befriending people. So, yeah. you know, it's it's good and it's not because, you know, I, I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, people are like, wow, he really doesn't shut the hell up. <laughs> but it's just, you need that fan base, solid fan base before you do anything. Right, right. Yeah, that's well. But you know, um, I I don't know. I think I, I subscribe a bit to the there are no accidents in the world, and even though you may not have had a fan base when you first started, you're getting one now. And all of those episodes that you did, where you interviewed people, just made you a better interviewer. So yeah. that now, yeah. when you're actively seeking people to become um, an audience for your show. You know, you uh, you are you have a better show for people to watch. No, I agree. And I was just the popped in my head. I knew these two uh, wrestlers. So I was going to ask, you know, how can your kids like? What do I do to cater to their kids? But let me ask you, what do you think I have to do to cater? I don't want to dumb my show down, like have sock puppets or anything, even though that is not a bad idea. <laughs> but I want my show to cater to everyone, like from 18, like from 21 up, mm -hmm. because I got 21 and up, and I go up 20 to about, I don't know, 60, 70, but mm -hmm. it's that demographic of 13 to 21 or 13 to 18, I'm signing the work on, and I'm trying to get, well, if I get them, maybe I can go back a little mm -hmm. more, but how do you think I can please everyone? I know you say you don't want to please everyone, you're setting yourself up for failure, right. but at the same time, if you want your show to cater to everyone, you know, that is that doable, or you just have to pick one demographic? Well, I think that, I mean, I think that with any show, um, you, uh, you can't cater to everybody and, um, and something that would interest a 13 year old is not necessarily what would interest a 60 year old. Yeah. That's not always true. And sometimes, you know, there's one thing that maybe everybody's interested in. And I don't know if it's around the holidays and you, and you get a chef on your show to talk about what it's like to cook the perfect Thanksgiving meal or, you know, or people talking about their favorite Thanksgivings or their favorite holidays, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Maybe everybody would be interested in, but um, I don't think it's a bad thing that, I mean, I, sometimes I watch Stephen Colbert, I start to watch it and I go, Oh, I don't want to watch tonight. This isn't for me. Yeah. Other times I watch and it's like, it's, it's a, the greatest show. So um, I, I don't think, I think that you should, um, you know, people are interested in things that are interesting. <laughs> it's, it's really, you know, you have somebody come on the show that has something interesting to say or is fun, you know, whatever it is they do, it's, um, you know, if, if they're a teacher, if they're, tell me what it's like to be in sanitation. Oh, you work at the, you know, whatever it is that you do, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think people are interesting. And whatever it is they bring to you and to the show, I think is is uh, is important. Um, I, I think that a lot of times in this day and age, we um, are we tend to have blinders on and we focus only on one thing, and we hang out with people who vote the same way we do, think the same way we do. You know, artists a lot of time don't hang out with other people except artists. And I think that it's um, 
I think that it's very limiting. And, uh, and I think that something like your show, you bring people on, you talk to people from all different uh, places in all different uh, phases in their life and doing different things, that that's, that it's important. Um, you know, that's one of the things that they talk about Facebook, you know, and, and so many people are, you know, dropping out of Facebook. I'm sorry about that. Scared the crap out of that's myself. All right. <laughs> that's all right. That's great. Um, it has been really, really, really nice to talk to you. And it's great to see you again after this long time. And I know you have your anniversary show coming up. And um, if I can, I'll participate. And But I do wish you all the luck in the world. It's really been great to talk to you. You too. I do have one more question for are you off the air about wrapping up your interview segment. You know, how can people follow you on social media? And being on a guest once again, would you recommend it? And how do you feel? Um, being a guest on your show is absolutely great and I would recommend it to anyone. Um, and you can follow me on social media. Um, I am on Instagram. I am brothers, Julia, and I am Julia bro on Twitter and Julia brothers on Facebook.